All right, hey, can, hope you can hear me. Another summer here at Top B, we're training. We got a, uh, right now, guys doing their throwing drills and I'm gonna take some questions off of Instagram. This is a good opportunity to get in some Q&A. Um, we, can, we can get your comments off YouTube if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Instagram, we can get your uh, questions and comments off of Instagram. Either way works um, and it's recorded so you can go back and review it turning so if you got any good good questions for us please ask your questions we've got a big camp coming up this weekend we got uh, Saturday and Sunday probably another uh, good group of guys coming in and doing some uh, target throws here chin back right like we were talking about. The belt right, if, if you're gonna get your trunk to go as opposed to just your arm, you're gonna have to, this is gonna have to counter back as you drive, so then you're gonna have all this loaded to launch forward. If not, then this is just gonna come up and then you're gonna, all you're gonna be able to use is your arm, right? How much is the camp? So the camps, which include all of your training, which they're here training, is basically just under three grand. And it gives you a career's worth of programming. And we got AJ in the house. Akbar. <laughs> Gonna scare you to death. <laughs> Is Markle Dixon the best looking good to ever be a part of the top loss? Yes. Yes, sure. We'll, we'll go with that. Um, we're out of Louisiana. So we're here in southern Louisiana. We're about an hour north of New Orleans. Um, we're in the heat. It's uh, what we do down here. It's why we play baseball a lot. It's because we got hot weather. And it's pretty hot today. Right now it's 93 in the building. So these guys are working hard. You got Coach Weston over there. Coach Weston. Coach Weston's in the house working with guys. All right, what we got? We got a question here. Is it hot? Pocket good for a post workout? I, that's a good question. I'm going to have to get Alex out here to answer that question. But he left. Maybe that's why he left. He knew you were asking that question. <laughs> Francisco. He's not even out here, dude. Oh, uh, we got a good question for you. It says uh, Is hot pocket good for a post workout? I'm, it's really on here. <laughs> Francisco Bozo. Well, well, well. Is hot pocket good for post workout? Uh, whatever. Haters. Uh, Haters gonna hate. I'm 5'7, 130 pounds, top 91. That's awesome, man. We just talked to uh, Garrett DeClue. I just got off the phone with Garrett DeClue. He's 5'6, uh, top in probably 91. Don't get it by the ball here. All right, um, next question. Why only two pound med ball throws? Would heavier med balls be all right to use? Yeah, I don't, we, th this is, that's a really good question. So this became the standard at top velocity because it, uh, it, so it just gets to the point where if the weight gets too heavy, what happens is you can't really improve as well because what happens, like you can throw four pounds of these. I don't recommend them. What happens is when you throw the heavier weight, you actually struggle to ever even get good mechanics out of it. So here's the thing, you're gonna go to this two pound med ball, your mechanics are gonna struggle, specifically the mechanics that are important to work on, like the legs and the trunk. Because that's what this does. The two hand doesn't allow you to really overload the arm and accelerate the arm. So you wind up having to really overemphasize the leg power and the trunk power. What happens when you go past this, like fours and sixes, it's so heavy, there's no way you can emulate these good mechanics. So I don't recommend anything over two because what happens is you actually don't really improve. Maybe the, the weight will help your core, but this isn't really built for core routines. We, we use heavier med balls for our core routines, but for this drill, throwing drill, it has to allow us to get back to better mechanics. And if it's too heavy, it's just you're gonna struggle too much and you're not gonna get there. It's kinda like what guy with cleaning, and he's cleaning with like three times his body weight, or let's, too excited, that's an Olympian. He's cleaning, cleaning, say he goes in and he tries to clean 120% of the body weight and he's never done barely his body weight. There's, it's gonna be impossible for him to have good technique, like literally impossible. 
So we're going to want him to start off a lot lighter. Now, could he work up to that? Maybe. But the problem is with throwing, it's really, really hard to get to better technique. Um, it, it's really hard to eventually get to better technique, even at a four pound. Um, it, because of, there's so much more complexity in the movement, a lot of rotational forces um, that, that you're not de dealing with with a lift. You know, you could eventually get to 150% of your body weight. But, you know, I could say you could eventually get to four pounds, but the problem is you're going to probably have to be training with two pounds for two, two years, maybe more, until that maybe is even possible. So, you know, maybe the, the new answer is you could probably get to heavier weight, but I just, you're not going to, you don't, you're not going to, you're, if you're just starting, you're so far from that. Right now, it's just learning how to get good at two pounds. But that was a good question. And, you know, we did that for years. I, actually, I even saw a, a, a soccer study that looked at overweighting uh, soccer balls for velocity. And when they exceeded two pounds, velocities actually, throwing velocities on soccer throws, actually went down. So, and you see that also in, like, um, javelin throwing, weighted, weighting javelins there gets to a point where actually it starts hurting velocity. And I believe four pounds, specifically right out of the gate, is not going to help your velocity because you're going to struggle to actually develop the mechanics that we want. Is there prep or boxes to check one could do prior attending the camp? Or is there prep or boxes? Yeah, when you register for the camp, you're going to get the programming right up front. You're going to get a career's worth of programming, all the educational materials. So I usually recommend right when you register for the camp, you start the pitching one on one, you start educating yourself on the pitching one on one, then you go into the level one and you start the level one training. So you, the point is once you register for a camp, you're actually gonna start learning and training immediately, right away, and ideally. So when you come in here, you actually have um, a, a, you're starting to develop a good understanding and you're starting to apply what you've been learning already. So you're doing it. You're landing trunk up. Trunk up, chin forward. Right? And that's why sometimes if you can't fix it there, you got to go back to your knees or go back to your chest opens where it's simpler and you're just focused on, I got to keep my trunk back and I got to let my hips drive and lead and then release that to my trunk. Because if you just keep sitting here transferring your trunk early, you're never going to get your leg power into the ball. It's all going to be early transfer, early arm action. And all that power in your legs is left behind because all this went ahead. It's like taking the whip. Instead of throwing the whip back, I just threw it all out together. Right? Even if I, I could throw the handle down as hard as I did when I threw it back, it's still not going to get into the end of the whip because you're killing the counter movement through your body. So you've got to really emphasize that. And like, as you're adding you know, separation, all that in, if, it, if, if you're struggling fixing it there, then you go down to the simpler drills and you just get it, do your best to get it there. And the key to doing this is feeling the foundation in the pelvis and the hips and the lower half. That's your mover. That's your driver. This is just reacting. Good. Yeah. Like just like that. That was a great one. You don't feel, you don't feel this powering and this reacting. You're backwards. And then more than likely this is powering when it's supposed to be reacting to the, to the power of the legs. Okay. That was better, but not enough power. And so it's like, so here's the thing. It's like, you're, you're putting yourself in position to use your whole body. You're struggling to create the power. That is a problem. But what do you do? Just sit there and struggle and then keep working on your leg power? Or do you start overcompensating and trying to overcome it with your upper body, which you know is only potentially, if you ever throw hard there, might just lead you to injury. And potentially it also will, put, it will cap out your power, you cap out your velocity because you're not using your lower half. You're literally cutting off your lower half. All right, another question, what we got here? You're the man, thank you, brother, appreciate it, man. Come down here and get to work. Great job getting pitchers strong correctly. Thank you, man, appreciate the support. AJ needs a haircut, that's what I'm hearing. That was Noah. It's the word on the street. That was Noah. He needs a haircut. Who said that? It said Noah. I knew it. During an outing, what is the first mechanical part to get fatigued and lose uh, effective velocity so it depends like if you're a professional pitcher and you use the kinetic chain well it's gonna be your legs if you're an amateur pitcher and you poorly use your legs and your upper and your core then it's gonna be your arm your arms gonna get fatigued that's why those guys struggle to 
go up in velocity. That's why those guys typically stay more injured or in pain more. So that's a good question, but it really depends what kind of pitcher you are. And if you're an amateur pitcher, it's probably your arm breaking down first. I was just talking to one of the guys here. He's, he's stiff. His arm's not laying back. You can see him tightening up, stiff. And so when he's throwing, he's, he's, he's over putting over effort in his arm and as opposed to staying relaxed. And it's crazy. You, you tighten up that much, you're going to be so much more in fatigue than if you're just staying relaxed and throwing. All right, let's go over here, check these guys out. All right, so don't get killed by these guys. I'll be back in June, Brent. Awesome, Jaden. Tell Rafa to do something. Rafa, you need to do something. Where is he? Rafa, they're saying you need to do something. It says in here, it says, tell Rafa to do something. They, it just says, like, you're not doing anything. Caleb or Noah? Oh, it's Noah. Yeah, it's Noah. I didn't even say that. It's Noah. Noah. He said, tell Rafa to do something. You're not doing anything? <laughs> Come on, we got to get better every day, Rafa. Yeah, I like it. Guys picking on each other in here. And they're doing it through the feed. Hilarious. If there's a way to get training and a program, if I'm not able to attend camps because I am from West Texas, yeah, we have the programming online. You can just do it online, and you can follow through with us on our social media like you're here. Topblossy.net. Good job, Lulu. Who's Lulu? Did I even say that right? What's up? Luis, you are my man. Someone said Luis is the man. Luis, you got some support in here. Someone's saying you're the man. Ho it says Jose. Yeah. Joey, my guy. Uh, Jaden. Mathen. I guess he's your guy. What age do you recommend starting this program? You know, we got guys as young as, I've had a guy as young as 10 or kids as young as 10, 11, 12. I like to see them young because they can start these principles early. They can start uh, learning to train early. It just is all going to spur their development and help keep them healthier. Tyler says Weston break in 90 this week. No, they're saying no. Nope. Tyler said Weston's breaking 90 this week. Not, that's Cap. I no, called Cap, Tyler. Sorry. Appreciate the positive energy. You are great. A father gave us your training and our boys here in Colombia. And I don't even say that. In Vigado, Cubs have improved a lot. That's great. Great to hear, man. Keep following us. Keep getting better. Oh, Lulu is Luis. You're Lulu? Yeah. I didn't know that. They're telling, they're telling secrets about you in here. <laughs> yeah, Noah called Cap on Tyler. Wes and Noler, Noah called Cap, too. He posted, he's like, that's Cap. Don't get hit. Don't get hit. You almost took one in the air. What's going to be the next trend or next finding pitchers that's going to eventually be a norm? Like weight of balls, for example. Yeah, I wouldn't call that. That's been around since the six, since the 1960s. I think the next thing for pitchers is going to be um, technology that helps them better understand their kinetic chain. Um, and, and them it becoming more mainstream, more metrics in the biomechanical principles becoming more mainstream. I believe something like uh, a lot of these extreme throwing methods are going to die, and they, I believe they are dying because um, doesn't meet, doesn't, this isn't supported well with a lot of the evidence. How do I get more power from my legs? Right now I'm throwing with all arm. So you got to be able to, you got to develop your legs. So you got to learn to lift to get your legs where they need to be. 
you got to learn to uh, use them. You got to learn the techniques and the lifts to better apply them. You got to learn the biomechanical principles and the drills to apply them. And that's what we do at Top Velocity. So you really got to buy into the whole method. Any questions? You want to go check questions on YouTube? Yeah, just go over here and put it down. We'll go check questions on YouTube because I don't have any on here now. You want to go ahead and put it down? Or? All right. All right, all right. You keep it on them, so and I'll keep talking. All right, looking on YouTube, see if we got some questions here. It says, at front foot strike, should I be forcing the rotation of my trunk or should the lower half just be able to guide it and push my trunk through? So, yeah. So he's saying, should, when you land, let's last ask these guys. So the question is, when you land, should your trunk, should you be forcing the rotation of your trunk? Or should your, or should your legs be, actually there is some, but should your, you're saying there shouldn't be any force, but there is rotation going on. Or what, what you should be doing? Should you be forcing your trunk to rotate or, or should something be else be happening? Your legs should be driving your trunk forward. And how does that happen? Can you show them? Well, either way, just say as a pitcher, so because they probably don't know our methods. So see if you can break it down as like as you're pitching. Oh yeah. Here, talk close to me. Oh. This is where we need another mic. We need another wireless mic. Well, as you're driving, you should be driving down and forward, and your leg power should be causing your truck to go back at first. And then once you stabilize your front leg, that's going to cause your trunk to come. Okay, that's a linear thrust. So help them understand. Yeah, but let's help them understand it because they don't know our methods. Let's help them understand it from a pitcher, like out of your leg lift. Joey, do it. Yeah, Joey, go ahead. Joey, do it out of your leg lift. What drives trunk rotation optimally out of your leg lift? The legs. Show us how it works. Where does it come from? How does it work? Because uh, this is for people that don't know our methods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so and they're just pitching. Act right. like you're pitching. No, just oh, so do it like you're pitching. Okay, okay. So, uh, starts from the ground. So out of leg lift, we're here, and then we drop. Uh, trunk staying still, hands are staying still. Once but remember, get... remember the focus here. How does how does you power your trunk rotation? If, how, how, what's powering it? The drive leg. Yeah. How, show them how oh, it's yeah. powering it. Okay. Yeah. So once we get to our lowest point. We're delaying trunk, we're starting the trunk. The second we go to drive, we're driving, we're driving down, and then the trunk's going back when we're driving down. And once we So hit, when you say driving, what, what point of force is driving? Like where's the- Shin. So it's the back shin, and then that's yeah. pushing through what? Where does it go up to? Yeah. It goes to the ankle, to the shin, into the leg, the glutes. Right into here, right? Yeah, the hips, hips. And, and so this is your back hip. And then, so that push there is going to do what to this back hip? Push it out. It's going to push it around. Yeah. And then you're going to counter this. Yeah, this is back. So when, when, you, that when you pull this shoulder against that hip, yeah. then what does that do? That goes forward. So that, like a catapult, yeah, exactly. when yeah. this goes ahead, like a catapult, this stays back, this then launches it through. Yeah, that's the So way. that way you don't have to force your trunk because your legs did it, right? Yeah. And what do you think? So if, if your legs don't do it, how are you going to force your trunk to rotate? Can't. You need to do legs. Well, well, yeah. There's a way to do it bad, poorly. Oh yeah, I did it when I first came here. I just so when so you land and your legs aren't driving, how are you going to create trunk rotation? Just Thank rotating, you. just pulling. Yeah, pulling. So think about it. When you're powering trunk rotation, pulling with your glove. Yeah. How less effective is that than powering your rotation with your back leg and back hip? Much less. I, I when I first came here, I threw 89, moving as fast as I could. And then I threw 92, moving way slower, and I can actually pitch with 92, moving slower by using my back leg. Right. And, but the challenge is, is you, because you want to pull your gloves so bad, the yeah. challenge has been you having to constantly shut this off and yeah. make your legs do it and separate into it. Oh, yeah. That was a great drill, using your glove behind your back. Yeah. So it's not easy doing this, right? Oh, no, not at all. No. So that's it. That's the answer. To that. yeah. So the answer is, does that make sense to you guys? So if we don't use our back hip to drive hip rotation, our back leg to back hip, this whole unit here, if we don't use that to drive the hip rotation as we counter this back, 
then if we land with barely hip, any hip rotation, where are we going to get the forces to rotate our trunk? Where are we going to go? Yeah, you'll even might even do this, and then you're going to do this. What's the problem with doing this and doing this for velocity? And your arm pulls. Your arm gets behind, you drag. Where does your trunk want to go? Everything wants to go this way as opposed to forward. So it doesn't really do a lot of good things for you. It can work. Like you can get velocity there, but eventually it's going to cap you out. And then you're going to go somewhere else. And then you start realizing I'm not even using my legs. And then that's why y'all are trying to do this. You're trying to learn how to use your legs, right? But tell them too, how hard is it? Like here, we'll ask you. So Luis has been doing this for a year. So how hard is it? when you come into a method that teaches you your legs and you've never worked on your legs before, how hard is it to start learning that? It, it's pretty difficult. Yeah. Like when you get into it, like you, your hips can be back and you can't drive the hips. Like I remember when I first did it, like my arms hurt quite a bit sometimes just because I couldn't get my hips through. And I couldn't understand how to do that. So I'd like just yank my arm and just bring and my arm And that's what wears through. your arm out. Yeah. So once you learn to shut down using your upper body and use your legs, what happened to your arm? My arm felt great. Yeah, I you feel like you can throw a lot. Huh? Yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I've Why do you think it works that way? Well, because you're not you, like the force comes from your whole body, and right. you're not creating force from your arm. So when you're you're not yanking your arm, you know your arm really does nothing. It just like yeah. acts as a weight to guide the ball. But it, tell them how hard it is to do that. It's not easy. It's yeah. really hard. But that's what makes this an elite skill, right? Yeah. And you obviously want to learn it at that level because you know that's going to give you more potential to, to play for a long period of time, maybe at a high level, right? Yeah. Cool. Well said. All right, let them do their drill again. I might get another question. Do they you have a question on there? No. Just Noah's saying bad things on there? Says, next question, what are good exercises for internal hip rotation? <laughs> oh, your trunk's not staying back at all. Weston, good question for you. I need, we need to get a mic next time. What are uh, good exercises for hip internal rotation? Uh, I like to do the 90 drill when you get on the floor. And it's basically have both legs at 90. And you want to keep your uh, butt on the ground and you want to move back and forth into it. Make sure you keep your balance into it. And then I also like to go, like be elevated on the surface. Like on the box. Yeah. All right, so he's looking, showing you another exercise of hip and turn rotation. And then I like to put, keep your hips trying to square as possible. And I like to lean into this. Really feel the stretch. You'll feel it like right here on the side of your glute. And just really move back and forth into it. And you do both legs. And those are like the main two I do. I also do another one. It's a little more advanced. It's more for strengthening exercise. Not a drill, but then you try to pick up this leg without anything else. It's not much. You'll feel it. Most people usually cramp trying to do that for the first time. It's really the three main things I do for internal. Those are good ones, too, for internal. Um... And you can get creative there. There's a lot more you can do. Hey, let's take a vote in here. Everybody raise your hand if you think Slade is going to get to 90 before Weston. Raise your hand. Everyone say yes. Dude, there's a lot of people. Raise your hand if you think Weston's going to get to 90 before Slade. Oh, you got a little Weston team in here. Look, look, look. You got a good team in here. What? It's like 50-50. Slade has no comment. Look, he turned your, his back to you. He turned his back to you, no respect. He's like, no respect. <laughs> no respect right there. <laughs> he fears me. That's what it is. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure. All right, that's the next challenge. I got another question. You want to put it up so you're not carrying it? All right, sorry, we've been wandering. I've been answering questions on YouTube. So if you're on Instagram and you have some questions, let me know. Go to YouTube, our YouTube at Top Velocity. You can watch it. Let's see, get off the cam, AJ. 
Next question we got here is Road Wireless You can thank me later. Um, would you stretch the hip flexors to help with the drive leg? Stretch the hip flexors to help with the drive leg. And I took it away? Yeah. All right, sorry. I didn't know. Y'all should have told me. All right. Where'd the camera go? Oh, he's over there. Tuck your chin, drive your hips, and shin down and drive. There you go. Now you got it. See how you're landing? Now you're back here? Yeah. Now we got to hit and feel it launch. You want the chin tucked, not out? Yeah, tucked. I was thinking, like, keep it out of that, but back. So that was, like, I guess, an issue. No. Tucked behind your belt buckle. The thing is, you did it right, but it wasn't enough power, and you got stuck behind your leg. Right. It's got to be enough power to launch you over your leg. And your front leg has to be ready to support that and even push back into it. have, like, a good leg lock. Control. Yeah. All right, the, uh, the other question was, we're getting a poor connection signal here. The other question is, let's see, I want someone else to answer this question. Heads up, heads up right here. A little more drive. I got a question for you, uh, Francisco. It, on YouTube it said, should, would stretching your hip flexors help your drive your leg drive. Well, how do I say? If you get mobile, you can move better than, than before. So, of course, it's going to help you, you drive. So, everything has to be with, with mobility. Right. So, how would it specifically help you drive? If I stretch my hip flexor, how would that help my drive? It will let me, like, get even, like, yeah. more position, more to the front. More hip yeah. rotation out of it. If not, it's it's tight, so now you're you're stuck in your hip drive. Exactly. So okay. we need to be mobile uh, in our hips, extensive flexion, all those areas. And I also talk about how it, a lot of the hip flexor tightness is the quad because the rectus femoris attaches a, a, on the top of the pelvis. So if I'm loading in my quad now, my my quad is on. So now when I go to drive, I'm driving through a tight quad, and that's going to be a tighter hip. Yeah, uh, uh, and also we have a bad habit. It's like we do a stretching only when it hurts. When our leg is hurting, our quads are hurting, it's when we grab the phone roll and start hitting. That is something that we need to do every day to improve the flexibility. All right, that was a good one. All right, so we had a question here, and it's getting hot. I'm about to be drenched. What would be the first thing you can work on with your young pitchers, eight? To eight years old, I guess, I don't know, six, eight years old. Um, good things to work on with, with pitchers. Let's go over to the beginner drills. So heading over to the beginner drills, try not to get killed along the way. And we're going to take a look at these beginner drills over here. All right, so we got a lot of drills here, if you didn't notice. There's, uh, these are just the drills. Uh, doesn't include all the exercise and the lifts and everything. But these are beginner drills. And the beginner drills, the great things you could do with the young kids is learning how to just drive. We call these three x before front foot strike. Or um, the drive drills, it's fun. You do like a 15 foot three drive series. The core arm path, three, the core three arm path. Basically there's, core, there's three core movements that you can just teach them in a drill to teach them the arm path. Uh, the crossovers, basically it just helps you uh, really understand and feel what hip to shoulder separation is and that's good to teach with a young kid. What is hip to shoulder separation? So these little crossover drills really help that. The, uh, then you start teaching them some of the med uh, throw basics because getting them the med balls is ideal but it's so hard because it forces you to use the whole kinetic chain that you really need to start giving them some basic drills with it to help them slowly progress into the level one drills, which are all down there. Um, and then it goes level two, level three. Uh, we've got uh, position player throwing drills, hitting drills, and then all the mechanics that you need to understand because I did a video on the other day 
it's not enough just doing the drill. It's a drill is an opportunity to apply principles. So it's an opportunity to apply the mechanics that is what links to the velocity. So the drill doesn't link to the velocity. So I like to put it as these drills don't mean why these guys are throwing hard. And it's why some guys are throwing harder than others in the drill is because the drill is the opportunity to apply the principles. And when you apply the principles in the drill and you apply them well, that's when you get the result. So it's not just the drill. It's the drill helping you apply the principles. That's it. If you do it right, then it could be separation could be minus five off your mound below if you do it right. Well, and, and that's basically taking the separation that you've improved in the drill and getting that same separation to the mound. Yeah, exactly. That's so if you get it. right, if you get to the mound like in a game, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're collapsing your leg now and you're pulling your glove, well, who cares that you threw uh, five miles an hour slower over here or, or the same speed because you haven't converted it, because you're throwing here completely different to your throwing up there. So it has to be the same on the mound if you're going to see it translate. It's really just delaying the trunk, though, more and more. It is, because that's the biggest counter movement. And that starts the counter movement process. Are you going over there? I'm um, checking out more questions. You have more questions? Put them on, post them up. I've been pitching for about six months, and I'm struggling to throw strikes. I am touching 90, but, it, but that doesn't mean much if I can't stay in the zone. What type of mentality do you do, you, do you, with your athletes? So here's the thing, Sh throwing strikes is a consistency measurement, it's a, or it's a precision measurement and a consistent measurement. So precision means you are precisely locating or moving where you want the ball to go. So in your mechanics, and like we teach in our mechanics, the top velocity mechanics, if I'm generating majority linear energy and my trunk is specifically finishing that linear energy, it's going to be a lot easier to locate and command the ball around the strike zone. If I'm pulling off too hard, it's going to be very hard to command the strike zone. So first of all, when you're not throwing strikes, you have to say, you have to question a few things. You got to say, am I, is my precision moving to the location? Am I moving energy to location? Because then it shouldn't be much of an issue. Say you're doing that. But say, you know, one's inside and the other one's down and then the other one's kind of middle. They're going in that direction, but they're not exactly where you want it. Now that's consistency. That means you need more reps in those mechanics so you can more precisely create those same movements every time. And that's just reps, right? So if, if I'm precise, meaning my mechanics are locating, are going where they should be to locate, but I'm still a little scattered, then you're just not training enough. And also, reps means endurance. So if I'm getting fatigued, even though I'm consistent up to the second inning, I'm precise with my mechanics, but n then I lose my consistency or lose my command, you're probably now fatigued. So there also is an endurance factor in lo locating or commanding pitches. So remember that. You have to, by mechanically, you have to be precise to the location. Um, consistency through doing it reps, doing it enough times where it becomes more muscle memory. You're gonna have to do that to be commanding better. And then endurance, like you're gonna have to have more anaerobic conditioning so your body doesn't break down. So, cause fatigue can create inconsistency. So those are three things. If you don't have those, you're gonna struggle. And the strong literally comm commands like your pitches. Right. Like I was the guy who always missed down and I, I always had an early trunk. I would be like out there. Landing yeah, out and here. that's why and you're missing down. Miss down. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, and same thing, yeah. Yeah. Right, so your trunk is dictating where the ball's going. What's up? I was wondering if it's still good. You know, I was talking to you about how when I Yeah, throw, the laxity. Is it still good if I just, if I, if it happens when I'm... You know, no, it's not. Like, so basically right now, I would keep your velocities down until you get stronger. So try to keep your velos down so it doesn't do that. And then... As you get stronger, then you probably notice you can pick them up again. You don't feel as much. You just, you got to get stronger up there. Right, thank you. So yeah, just keep them down to where you're not feeling that. Yeah, you probably don't feel it with your med balls. But you can do with the baseballs. Just keep the velas down until you start feeling it. Okay. Here when they are on the mound. 
think I have them on. Should med balls be thrown as a warm up before bullpens and games? Yes. Ask Orzy. Yeah, like <laughs> uh, Eric Orzy does it. I'm a big believer in it because I've seen it anecdotally in here where guys actually struggle in the season and I say, have you put your med balls in? And most of them haven't. So it's just going to help you. Like I said, what's your pregame routine? Your pregame routine should be your pregame sh routine should be uh, doing the drills so you can make sure your mechanics are sound, refined, and consistent. Then you should go into your bullpen. So you should ideally be doing med ball training because that's helping you refine, perfect your mechanics before going into a game. Because I don't want to go into a game in my bullpens and I'm lurking on location, I'm working on spin, and then I've got to tell myself I'm not separating well. I've, I would have already rather figured that out before, before I went into my pregame bullpen. Where's he warms up with these though? Like instead of playing catch, like he'll throw these, a few of them, and then he's good to throw like on the mound. Yeah, and like um, I've seen ma uh, minor league teams doing these uh, pregame. How do you determine an ideal stri stride length for your pitchers? Do you? Base it off their height. Yeah, it should be 80, 90% of your height. That's the case studies show that's the optimal stride length. So 80, 90% of your height is an optimal stride length based on peer reviewed evidence. That was Slade. He's back, the legend of Slade. Apply the principle with right mechanics and approach. True. Thank you. Yes, we support you. See what else? Any other questions? True, and I am moving toward a location with right release point. Good. The biggest question is, will Slade ever cut his hair? It's lacy. <laughs> I don't think so. Where'd he go? He left. I got some long, a lot of long hair guys in here. You got AJ too, Lacey. Reps means endurance. It's, it is a mentality, yep. When is the deadline to sign up for a camp this summer? Um, you know, they usually, if they sell out, it's within a w couple of weeks. They try to get in before a couple of weeks of the camp. Topglossy.org. Hey, Rick, I'm in North Carolina playing summer ball, or summer college ball. Any advice for me as a pitcher? Yes. Why are you playing summer ball? Is it because you're exactly where you want to be and you want to improve your game and also get exposure at the next level? Or should you not be playing summer ball because you're not where you want to be, your mechanics aren't there, your body mass isn't there, your athleticism isn't there, your ball velocity isn't there, you're therefore because your ball velocity isn't there, your spin isn't there, then maybe you shouldn't be playing summer ball. So first make the decision, should be playing summer ball or not. And then when you play summer ball, if, that, if you're there because your stuff's legit and you want to improve, like you want to perfect it and you want to put it, show it off, then that's what you're there to do. So first of all, understand why you're in summer ball. I think people fail when they go to summer ball when they know should, they should be in a place like this training. And now they're trying to end summer ball train and they don't really get much out of it. Can young pitchers use the two-pound med ball drill or should they wait till they're older? So with the young kids, we use one pound. So you just get them a one pound. The one pounds are actually identical. It just says one pound. Those are perfect for them. I'm going back to YouTube, see if we got any more questions. I think we had another question on YouTube. Thanks for you guys chiming on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, please, because if you subscribe to the feed, it will actually let you know that we've gone live. So if you want to catch the next one, we do a lot of these now. Should I front squat or back squat to get more out of squatting? Um, let's see. Let's see uh, what Weston thinks. Weston got a question. Should I front squat or back squat to get more out of squatting? I'll do both, to be honest. Right. Exactly, right? Yeah. What does the front squat do for you that the back squat doesn't do for you? It helps me get in a deeper range, and I feel more on my frontal half, so it really keeps stability on my frontal half. And your core, too? Yeah. But that's good. Yeah, front squat helps you get deep. And we, why do we like to deep squat? What's, what's the significance of deep squatting? So the deeper you get on the mound, you got to get powerful in that position the deeper you right. get. Because there's, there's getting low center of mass in your pitching delivery is going to support you using your legs. So if you got a lot of strength, ass to grass, better chance you can sit lower out of the mound, right? Thanks, bro.
How do you know if you're doing the leg drive properly? What's indications you're doing the leg drive pop properly? And here we have something that helps. Yeah, the king of the hill gives you the pop. So my, my foot drags. A, a good a drag helps yeah. a lot. Like not, what, not what like that. you're right. So if you're getting yeah. wear and tear on the side of your foot, yeah, that means your hips are not coming all the way around. Exactly. I feel like nothing my upper half the works. Like, right. So you're, you're, he says he feels less stress in his upper half. So like a drag. Is yeah, like, but yeah, like this, no, 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 like, like no, yeah, like yeah. This. Top of your yeah, toes is good. Yeah. Side of your foot is your hips aren't rotating. Because <laughs> sometimes when I drive, like I feel like. My foot drives, but then I feel like that's like slowing me down. No. Well, if if your weight is, if your trunk is transferring forward, your it should start to come up. But initially, in your drive and your separation, co coming out of rot your trunk starts rotating, you're gonna feel a drag. But then when your trunk goes forward, you, you should feel it moving up at that point. See right there. Yep. Uh, but see, if his trunk got a little farther forward, it, then it might start coming up. But you, but some guys are gonna have longer drive drags than others, and those guys are gonna be guys that are probably getting a little more power in the back leg. But remember I told you, it's a relationship of your back leg drive to your front leg drive. If your back leg's gonna drive really big, your front leg's not yeah. gonna have to stable, it's just gonna have to stabilize it. It won't have to push back so much. But if you don't get a big back leg drive, then you need to have a bigger front leg drive. All right, so now question, is there a difference between like just the toe being there and like basically like the whole, like is there a difference between just dragging this part? Yeah, because I want your shin you down. Cause the lower your shin is, the lower your shin is, the, the more your hips probably coming through. So I, the drag, you should be really getting dirty on the top of your foot, ideally. But yeah, because sometimes I feel that, but like, I, I think like that's bad. Well, if it's there too long, like if you if you never get out of the drag. No, I get out of it, yeah. but I just feel like the drag, I felt like that's yeah. bad. That's probably you separating. Think about it. The more I separate into my drives, the more I drag. The earlier I go out of my drives, the less I drag. So it could be a good indication you're separating. Sometimes my knee hits the floor, but that's bad though, right? That's what? Definitely. If you're not moving forward, it's not. It would be fine if you're if you're getting that low to your into your drive. Like yeah, like I feel I feel my knee scrape the floor sometimes. Yeah. Well, but you're. I feel like I'm he's not like, that tall. That's possible. Low. Like wow. there's a lot of pitchers. You didn't have to do me like that, bro. You didn't have to do me like that. There's a lot of pitchers out there that actually would drag their knees. So that's that's actually that would be a good thing if if you're driving. Your hip rotation, your hip rotation pull your foot off the mound. Yeah, so if you're driving through your hips, that would pull your foot off. So be careful in that way you're saying that. He's saying your hip rotation pulls your foot off the mound. That makes it sound like your hip is the driver. It's That's not. Thing, your foot is the driver. So technically your foot drives your foot off the ground. But because you're able to rotate into your drive, yeah, the rotation would pull it off. But it's not the actual hip rotation pulling it off. The actual force is the foot pushing hip rotation, causing it to come off. We're all wondering that. We don't know. He what, do what do you say? What do you say? When's Weston, Weston getting on the mound? <laughs> Weston. When are you getting on the mound, they said. When you get on the mound, Weston. When? No. It w they say it well, he threw yesterday. Yeah, he throws in summer league. Right, he they threw yesterday. He was like 95, 96 yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. Everybody's laughing at you. Come on, man. You got to be like, yeah, I was freaking 95, 96. Right? That's a good question. When does your arm flip up? Uh, when your arm flip up? Yeah, when does your arm flip up? Okay. It, timing wise. Yeah, it is timing. No, so, well, timing wise, it needs to be cocked before rotation. Yeah. What's, what would, what would, about how could you hurt your arm if, you're, if your trunk Early. is rotating before you cock? <laughs> how would that hurt your arm? You're dragging. Your arm is behind. Yeah. Right, much. because your arm. It needs to go into lay, layback, right? Yeah, and if so you're rotating early, if, your arm isn't getting Yeah, if your arm isn't, isn't fully up good. and you're rotating, now your arm is going to be late to layback. Therefore, it's going to pull behind you longer and you're going to drag your arm. Um. Let me see on YouTube, we got another question. Probably running out of questions here. Slade, they were asking about you. Uh, Lacey said, when are you gonna cut your hair? Yeah. No, Lacey, Stephen Lacey. I didn't know your sister's name was Lacey. Stephen Lacey said, when are you cutting your hair? 
Never. Let's see, should I? All right, I think that's the last question off of YouTube. Cool. Any more questions? Throw them at us. We got any guys left on the feed? Here we go. TJ prevention stretches. TJ prevention stretches. Uh, Workouts. I mean, everything yeah. TJ here. If, if throw can, throw the ball as hard ready. as you can, as far as you can, all the time. Yeah, long toss. Hey. Long toss. Uh, uh, we're kidding, we're kidding. No, we we're can't. Kidding. We can't actually. We can't say that one. Yeah. We can't say that one. Please do not. So basically, I was being sarcastic. Yeah, yeah, so pre TJ prevention stretches would be, um, look, this whole approach is TJ yeah, exactly, prevention. Yeah. Because like you were just talking, if my arm isn't fully cocked into rotation, now my arm's dragging, that's going to make you more susceptible to TJ. The more separation you get, the less stress you put on your arm. Exactly. There's actually a strong correlation to less stress in the arm. Separation. 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 Oh, yeah, Joe, you got to show them. One day. You want to do that one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have a lot of good All right, let's do the separation stretch. Bring it over here. Hey, we're going over here. Separation stretch. Don't get killed. Joey's showing it off. Joey, here, I'm going to mic you up. Here, put this in your pocket. Just put this in. I'm finally taking off a week, so I'm going to PR on Monday. I throw a little too much. Come closer, AJ. Wait, get my whole body. Sit down. All right. Well, all right. Can you see it, like the bands? Well, you need two bands. You need one around, like, under your butt, and then one by your shoulder. This just directly stretches out your lats and how to get more separation. So I sit here every day for, like, two, three minutes. And you can literally feel it. Like, if you do this once for one day, you can go throw it. You can feel a slight difference. And you can feel more mobile back here. Like, I literally just sit here, and it gets you more mobile. You'll throw harder if you do this, I promise. Want me to keep doing it? What? Uh, we, we're not, I think we do, we don't even do reverse. We do power. Cameron, what? Brent, someone said, why reverse lunges better than forward ones? Hey, guys. That's a uh, good live for today. We appreciate you guys following. Uh, subscribe if you haven't so you can catch on the next one. And we'll see you the next time. Still don't know where to train this summer. Estás listo para este verano.